Welcome Star Warriors, welcome to part 2. I started part 1 of why the Star Wars you loved will never return to tell you that if you are dead set on Star Wars, if you like nothing else but Star Wars because of the movies of the past, you will never get them again. But, here I am, back for part 2, to inform you that not all hope is lost. If you are such a huge fan of Star Wars because of the old movies, and you will not settle for something else, some new franchise to come in and take the torch from Star Wars, for whatever reason, you're stuck on the stories, the characters that George Lucas created, and even though those stories and those characters are all but gone right now, you still are attached to the name hopelessly and helplessly. Then there is a way out. I'm not so certain how uh, great the chances are that Disney Lucasfilm will take those this way or any way out. Um, it is possible that they will just continue making horrible movies. But, I do see a path to a measure of success for them. Okay. And the reason why I say that there's no way back to where Star Wars came from is because they've changed too much. They've changed the way the Force works. They've changed the way we think of beloved characters. Uh, there's really no way out of that darkness no real way back to the light anyway. But, it doesn't have to be completely dark. There's still something to salvage. Now, I kind of remind myself of uh, the old 1984 film Dune, I think it was 1984 anyway, where this old lady is talking to a younger woman and she's saying, uh, she's telling the, the younger woman about how her husband, will die, but the son, her son will live. And she says, we'll try to salvage the son, but for the father, nothing. He's gonna die. Okay, and that's basically how I see Star Wars. You know, uh, you know the, the original trilogy, the prequels, as far as we're concerned, as far as I'm concerned, those are dead. We've got this new thing in, the, in the, their place right now. And there may be a way to salvage some of it. So how do we go about doing this? Well, I mean, there's going to be a whole lot of hoopla, jumping through hoops, you're going to have to explain first in order to get people to believe that, yes, it is actually possible that uh, Princess Leia could fly through space after being blown out of her, the bridge of her uh, cruiser <laughs> and sitting out there for it, it an indeterminable amount of time, you know, just floating in space. So there's going to be, have to be a way to explain how that is possible. When someone like Mace Windu died from, you know, falling a few thousand feet, uh, it wasn't the, the wound that Anakin inflicted on Mace Windu that killed him, his hand being chopped up, that did, obviously didn't kill someone like Mace Windu. It wasn't being zapped by uh, lightning by Palpatine that killed him. Just no way. If the, the, the dead of space is not going to kill Princess Leia, then being zapped by lightning for a few seconds is not going to kill Mace Windu. So obviously if that character died, he died from the fall, right? I think everyone can agree with that. So if he died from the fall, how is it that... Uh, Princess Leia, a character who's never had any formal training to speak of, survives after being blown out of her, her, uh, the bridge of her cruiser, and sucked out into space. So that's going to have to be explained, and there is a way. So, we'll get down to what that way is now. Um... Episode 7, The Force Awakens. Episode 6, Anakin Brings Balance to the Force. 
there's a certain narrative there of which you can crawl an explanation through a small uh, crawl space uh, that might make sense for why all of a sudden people are more powerful, for why someone like Luke Skywalker can project his image all the way across light years. Um, it's gonna be sketchy just because there's for some reason 30 years of time or so between uh, Return of the Jedi and The Force Awakens. But let's say for instance after Anakin brings balance to the Force it took 30 years for the Force to actually change. For it to actually become more potent and for people who are manipulating it to become more powerful. No matter what happens in the future with the Star Wars narrative, there are going to be characters that are going to far surpass the, the, the power that killed Luke Skywalker. You know, they're going to surpass him and they're going to live through it. That's just the way storytelling goes in these instances where uh, where uh, writers and directors sort of crap all over a, a beloved hero in favor of establishing new heroes. Okay, so I mean, I heard John Campia, a uh, former manager over there at AMC Movie Talk and Collider Movie Talk, say he he uh, was able to achieve some sort of power that no one else could do, and only he can do, and he was so great. <laughs> They're gonna do. They're gonna undo all of that in the coming years, in the coming movies, guaranteed. You know, it's it's no different than back in 1977, the Death Star being so great because it was the size of a moon, or the Imperial Walkers being so great because they were just these huge elephant-shaped machines with, that were unstoppable. You know, and all of a sudden, years later. You get versions of each to just put the 1977 versions and the 1980 versions to shame. Well, you know, eventually these movies, these up and coming movies, are going to put the 2017 version of Luke Skywalker to shame with some character you've never heard before. You may not like it, you may hate it, but that's the reality of uh, storytelling in, in the present time. That's how they try to get their new characters over, by crapping on old ones. Uh, so, we were talking about a way to salvage uh, adequately the Star Wars franchise, though. So we have a vague uh, and undefined version of what the Force used to be, and what people used to be capable of who used it and now we have a vague reason of why it has suddenly changed the force is fully imbalanced now whereas before it wasn't and they're gonna have to work for, with that you know and there is a chance that they can start telling good stories and start developing good characters I think the chances of them doing that decrease exponentially with each passing year, as long as they're releasing one film a year, or more. Optimally, I think, you know, there should be three years between Star Wars films. You know, a good enough amount of time to film what they're doing, to uh, do post-production, and to write. So basically, you're going to have to, you know, in order to do adequate CGI and everything because um, you can't skimp on CGI either I mean that's a hallmark of Star Wars they've always had good CGI they've always had the best CGI the groundbreaking CGI so there's got to be enough time to actually do justice to the CGI but more importantly you, they've got to have time to write great stories to write great characters they're going to have to outdo uh, Star Wars 1977 as far as characters and writing go. And they've never ever done that. Never. There are talented writers out there. 
<laughs> talented character writers, talented story writers. Um, and right now, there's no one in Lucasfilm that talented. So, I mean, it's, it's bleak, but all hope is not lost. If you're stuck on Star Wars. If you can't move on. Now, I don't know what uh, will end up you know, taking the torch from Star Wars, but I'm not the type of person who's so stuck on it that I can't uh, look elsewhere for entertainment that is as good or better. Um, I've never seen any films that I liked better. I've seen some that I liked almost as much. There's just something about a space opera, that, you know, that has swords and sort of a sorcery type thing going on uh, that it is hard to beat. But it becomes easy to beat when you, you know, crap all over the characters, you have uh, incoherent storylines, um, you try to sell, to, you sacrifice great storytelling to sell uh, toys to kids. Um, it becomes a lot easier uh, to, to replace Star Wars when those sorts of things are going on frequently. The, there, there's hope for great Star Wars, but there's more hope that something else will come along that is even better, or that is at least a lot better than what Star Wars has become. You know, and I'm sort of looking for, forward to the more likely scenario that someone else will come along and just rip the rug out from under Star Wars and Lucasfilm and Disney. You know, that, that's the most likely thing that's going to happen. And it could happen five years from now, it could happen ten years from now, but it's almost guaranteed unless Star Wars can somehow pull out a miracle, surprise us all, and reclaim some of its lost glory. This video is getting kind of long, so <laughs> I'm not going to carry on too much longer, but I did want to, you know, sort of not be a downer for the new year. Not a complete downer, anyway. Uh, there's hope. Hold on to it if, you, you know, you can't see yourself going anywhere else. For those of us who... Uh, welcome something new you know it's only a matter of time it's only a matter of time I mean really Star Wars is a great name it's a great franchise it's done great things it's brought us amazing characters but there are other things out there that are, that are stories yet to be told characters yet to be realized that can be just as good if not better and that's hard to imagine but believe me believe me when someone is hungry for uh, the notoriety to get their story out there when someone is you know takes the time and they have the talent uh, there, there's no end to what you know to how much they can surpass Star Wars uh, even the 1977 versions versions we have to remember Star Wars the 1977 versions notwithstanding or not uh, uh, excluded they're built on archetypes. Everything about it was built on archetypes. And when it comes right down to it, someone else can use those same archetypes in a, in a somewhat different way to bring the same feelings back to us. You know? So with that, I'm just going to leave you guys with a happy new year. And I hope that it's a better one than 2017. Carry on.